at right back. The two centre halves are Reda Johnson and Rob Jones as the Owls get underway with Jermaine Johnson looking to burst forward immediately and he just runs into uh, the uh, left full back which is Rose who uh, just stands his ground and takes the ball away from the Jamaican. A good tackle's put in though by uh, Reda Johnson, his namesake and uh, Wednesday still with some defending to be done here as the ball just breaks out towards the right hand side and it's with Douglas who just turns this one back towards uh, the right full back which is uh, Carrick who uh, is tackled and dispossessed by a crunching tackle that's put in by uh, Lewis Buxton. Let's just give you the rest of the Wednesday team then. As I say, Jermaine Johnson's playing out wide today for Wednesday. They've also got Daniel Jones playing in midfield on the left-hand side. The two central midfielders are James O'Connor and also Darren Potter up front. It's Medine and Mella. Wednesday with defending to be done as the cross is drilled in by uh, Carrick and it's uh, turned away by uh, Sheffield Wednesday just about in the nick of time. Not that far, and it's a chance for uh, Jean-Francois to uh, get on the ball, but he fails to control that one, and Wednesday are breaking forward. Out on the right-hand side comes Jermaine Johnson, slots it through. It's a nice ball towards Neil Mellor, and he just misses the post. It's just wide of the target there from uh, Neil Mellor, looking to continue his uh, red-hot goal-scoring streak. That could have been number 19 for the season, but it doesn't trouble Phil Smith in the uh, Robins goal, as it turns out. John Pearson, an early opportunity there for Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, they're trying to make another positive start to a game. Yeah, yeah. Got your breath back? <laughs> Sorry, mate. You got your breath back? Oh, just about. I can't, uh, can't believe it. How time's flown. So, uh, just got here a little bit late, Mr. Start. Can't believe it. Well, we will be docking your wages. Yeah, yeah, you can do, mate. You can take all of it. <laughs> all right, then. that's what we're going to do. So zero becomes minus zero as the ball's uh, turned out towards the right-hand side and it's uh, controlled well by uh, Kanitz, who's just uh, coming for the uh, former Celtic player. Doesn't uh, quite get that one where he wanted, but again, uh, Swindon looking to apply some pressure with Matt Ritchie, the former Portsmouth youngster, who's uh, one of their better players, and he gets a shot away from distance. It bounces once in front of Nicky Weaver, but he makes a confident claim. It was an easy enough save for Nicky Weaver, who returns, as I say, in the Sheffield Wednesday goal. Let's give you the Swindon team. I've not done that yet, so Phil Smith is in goal because uh, David Lucas, the former Wednesday number one, is missing through injury. Then it's uh, Canis at uh, right full-back. The two central defenders of Frampton and also Francois with uh, Michael Rose at left full-back in midfield. It's Douglas, Prutton and Ferry up front. It's Elliot Benyon and Matt uh, Ritchie that made a number of changes actually from the side that lost to Notts County at the weekend. Five in total as the ball's played out towards uh, Buxton and Buxton just runs out of space in which to try and get a crossover and it will be a goal kick and it will be here for uh, Swindon Town. John, I'll tell you what I'm surprised about. Swindon have got John Paul McGovern on the bench and now he's started the weekend but he'd been well up for this game today well yeah my thoughts exactly when I saw the team sheet and uh, you know that's a game that I mean I'd be absolutely gutted if I was John Paul McGovern and coming back to Hillsborough and sat on the bench you know like you just said you know you'd be really really well up for it and uh, Unless he had an absolute mare on Saturday. Apparently didn't, he played really well, but they're obviously looking to get some fresh legs in there. I know they lost the game to Notts County, but, you know, this is do or die time, and JP's the sort of player you'd want involved. Yeah, that's what I mean, and my thoughts exactly. Oh, well, not our problem. Chance to, uh, as I say, <laughs> relegate Paul Hart today. He did it to Sheffield Wednesday with Crystal Palace on the last day of last season, after that two-all draw, which wasn't good enough for Wednesday to survive in the Championship. The ball's just... Pulled back there by Elliot Benyon, the former Torquay striker. It's turned out towards the left-hand side, controlled by uh, Rose. Rose slots it into uh, midfield where uh, Prutton will switch the play. In fact, uh, I think it was actually uh, Jonathan uh, Douglas as opposed to Prutton, the former Leeds uh, duo. Cross attempted here, but it doesn't come in from uh, Canis, blocked off by uh, Lewis Buxton. Also Daniel Jones playing today on the left-hand side, offering support. Defensively, here is Lewis Buxton. No chances taken. Just puts that one behind. Safety first. Bit of uncertainty there. I think uh, Lewis Buxton was waiting for Nicky Weaver maybe to come and take it off him, but uh, it was about 10 yards away, Nicky, so he, he took the safe way out, helped it behind for the corner. Nicky Weaver obviously battling back from injury. Richard O'Donnell, perhaps unlucky because he's done well during his little run in the side waiting for the corner to come in and it's turned in there and Weaver gets uh, two hands to it and punches it away towards the edge of the area it's retrieved by, retrieved by uh, Jonathan Lewis. back out towards the uh, well the right hand side and the cross for the left full back which was Rose who'd taken the corner it's dealt with by Wednesday and it goes back into the Swindon half and I think that was Frampton who's just returned to his goalkeeper Smith 
and they'll try and come forward. In fact, it's uh, Canis who's uh, trying to make some headway forward now, and he goes long, looking to hit the front early. And Benyon was uh, providing the run. It was intercepted. Also, uh, Alexan Ndai uh, in this uh, team. You might remember him from uh, his time with Crystal Palace. Obviously, Paul Hart aware of his qualities and bringing him to the county ground. Switch to the uh, left-hand side, and again, Swindon nice and patient in possession with uh, Douglas, middle of the park, plays it forward. Benyon just knocks it out wide. And Caddis will try the cross in. That's not a bad-looking ball, and well, Weaver gets uh, hands to it and pushes it away and then has to uh, try and jump on the ball as it uh, drifts away on the right-hand side of his area, but nobody was able to take advantage from a Swindon point of view. And Weaver will just bowl this one outside his area. What do you think, then, uh, obviously, uh, the goalkeeper back in today? But uh, Richard O'Donnell can count himself uh, unfortunate. I think he's... Uh... We've seen there, I thought that was a foul on Gary Medin. Surely he got pushed in the back. Here, Francois just outside the area, just yeah. to push him in the back. I thought, I mean, Richard O'Donnell's coming. Well, it's a mistake by Slip Rob Jones. by Jones, yeah, he's just uh, failed to control that one, and it's broken out towards Richie. Richie cuts inside onto the left foot. He'll try and drill a shot in. It deflects, still in the area, though. It might just break loose towards uh, Ferry, who tries to get the ball over. Wednesday deal with the danger, though, a sliding tackle. <laughs> Is that uh, James O'Connor there, was, back yeah. defending? Did really well there, James O'Connor. Yeah, I mean, uh, Richard O'Donnell, I think, coming and done really well. I, you know, I can barely think of uh, a mistake that he's made. I think there was possibly one in a home game uh, yeah. in, the, in, the early, uh, in, his early, uh, in his early games, but I can't remember too many mistakes. It was that Brentford, perhaps? I can't remember exactly, but I think you're right. A few of his kicks have, have been scuffed, but, I mean, that's what goalkeepers sometimes do, even the experienced ones. Ball goes towards uh, Jermaine Johnson, and uh, he plays it away up towards halfway, but Wednesday won't get there with Neil Mellor. Back up in the air, Jermaine Johnson's in the left-back position trying to deal with this, and it just comes off the uh, top of his shoulder and goes out of play for a throw-in. He wasn't happy there, Jermaine. He thought he'd got a little push as well. The ball in me on the head and then uh, went behind for the, for the throw. Michael but Rose must be the long throw expert. He's over there coming to take it, the left-back. <coughs> so a long one into the box. No uh, Danny Barth to uh, try and uh, deal with it. Obviously, he's out through illness today, is Danny Barth. That's a big miss for Wednesday because I think he's done ever so well since arriving on loan from Wolverhampton Wanderers. That ball turned forward by Swindon, but it's not going to do any damage and it's allowed to run out of play. Lewis Buxton watched well, Rob, it away. Rob Jones looks like he's struggling. Well, Rob Jones, he came off for the last uh, 10 minutes or so against uh, Walsall at the weekend and I think he did have a problem. And I wonder whether he might not have played today if uh, you know Wednesday had Danny Bart available, but perhaps after he was ill, he said, you know, I'll stick my hand up and he's the sort of character that would give it a go. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking on the subs bench though, and uh, you might think that Lewis Buxton would have to go back to centre off. Jones dropping it left back. Yeah, and then uh, you'd be looking at perhaps Gary Teal coming on, Sedgwick, one of those two. Yeah, so they might have to uh, adjust things if uh, he is struggling. He's just having a bit of attention here from uh, Paul Smith. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us at any time during the course of the commentary. It's your say at SheffieldWednesday.com. Interesting, I see Giles Koku was uh, withdrawn at half-time after 45 minutes. He was asked a question about that uh, that change as well. Was it tactical, was it an injury? The answer was no, he just wasn't carrying out the instructions and, and what he was expected to be doing, and he's uh, lost his place not only in the team but also on the bench. And We've seen a few examples already of uh, Gary's management style. If, if players don't do what's asked, they'll be out of the, 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 not only the starting line but the match day squad. Exactly, I mean, I've just seen Tommy Spur down underneath the uh, stand. And uh, Tommy... Obviously, not even on the bench as well. Be really disappointed. Uh, he's another one that's uh, fallen foul. Yeah, and you can also look at uh, obviously the two purchases uh, defensively Morrison. in the January window. Yeah, Morrison and also Reynolds. I think they'll be two that I'm not sure all they'll be uh, here next season if there is anyone that's willing to buy. I mean, that's the key thing. It's all over well as talking about Gary looking to revamp the squad and model it in his own image, but you've got to get takers for the guys under contract. Yeah, easier be, said than done, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how he goes about. That's a great leap from Medine. Done really well. Found Jermaine Johnson on the right. Yeah, Johnson cuts inside and he's uh, got good balance. Oh. Just tries to knock that one outside there towards uh, Neil Mellor. Just uh, goes to the wrong side of the uh, on loan striker from Preston. Johnson, another player that was uh, maybe given a rest against Walsall because he uh, started on the bench before coming on for Giles Coker. I think he was probably saving him for this home game. I think. Uh, Maybe he sees him as more of a home player, an impact player at home than perhaps away, Jermaine Johnson, certainly from the start. Um, 
Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, Jermaine Johnson, we, we, we spoke about it a, a million times. You know, the quality that he possesses. You know, he's got more quality that, than anybody in, in the squad. And he's a match winner and capable. And he's got it now and he's got a free kick for his trouble. He was just showing his trickery there and uh, they didn't quite know how to cope with him. Yeah, so when he's on fire, he, he's our best player. Which he was, remember, in the last home game. That's why I was slightly surprised to see him as a sub against Walsall. So wait, whether he was thinking, well, I've got two games in a few days, perhaps let's just leave him to start the, the second one. Yeah, yeah. Rob Jones uh, looks like he's just, he must, have got, he must have been bleeding, I think, because he's changed his shirt. He's probably got a knock on his nose. Well, remember, he did have that head injury not so long ago, which uh, caused him problems, and he was found in stop, and that, that free kick fired ball, in. Actually. That wasn't a bad ball. Daniel Jones, who took it, I haven't seen too much of him so far, but it just uh, goes past everybody and out of play for a goal kick. We're going to see Jones re-emerge and come back on here. He's waiting for the signal. So he's got the, uh, the spare shirt on now without uh, a name or a number. And he comes to take his position defensively. He's a player, obviously, that's looking to uh, try and uh, earn a contract here at Sheffield Wednesday. The ball's just uh, sent long by Swindon, but that's pretty hopeless, actually, and it's just drifted away and out for a goal kick. Daryl Keyes has got in touch. Hi, Rob and John. Hope we can continue our better form today and let's hope for a Sheffield double. I think we all know what you're on about. There are a few things that I miss about England. Bank Holiday Monday's been one of them. It's a normal working day here in the USA. Enjoy the sunshine and also a Wednesday win. All the best from Daryl. Yep, hi to Daryl. The weather is uh, excellent today and uh, there was a problem over the weekend which some of you may be aware of where there was a bit of a flash flood, wasn't there, in this uh, part of the world. And that <laughs> corner... Unbelievable. It was all like, it was, I mean, it was hailing and the hailstones were not as big as golf balls, but... I've never seen anything like it. It was I think battered it down for about half an hour. There were pictures that emerged on the internet just of, of Hillsborough as well, and that uh, that corner flag just uh, to the left of uh, Nicky Weaver, that was uh, fairly drenched, wasn't it? It's dried out very quickly, which is a good job, because I think people were getting uh, a bit worried that the game might be off today, but you wouldn't even think there's been uh, rain. It's a very, very nice day here at Hillsborough. The pitch looks immaculate. You can only see a few bare patches, as you'd expect at this stage of the season, inside the area. But other than that, I mean, I think the surface is in a, a great shape. It's uh, sent long. Lewis Buxton needs to uh, cope with the pressure, and he'll just play it back towards Weaver. Goes onto his wrong foot, and he has to clear it left-footed up in the air. It's a good clearance as well. Trying to find Daniel Jones, and Jones uh, tussling there with the right full-back, and uh, Gallis just uh, hits it at him, and uh, he gets the throw in his way. Does the uh, Swindon Town man. They send it long, but it again runs through for uh, Nicky Weaver. Bowls it out towards the right-hand side, and John Obsenabal plays it into the feet of Jermaine Johnson. Jermaine Johnson pushes it back towards the uh, right-back, who then tries to go long down the right-hand side. It was intercepted in first, and quickly there was Douglas. Up goes uh, Reda Johnson. Good header from the uh, former Plymouth Argyle defender. It's in the middle of the park, all a little bit scrappy. Comes bad out news. towards the right-hand side. So I said there's some bad news from Reddy. They're not winning, are they? Ready or Oh, that sort of bad news. Terrible. I still think they can you know, get safe. They're getting excited, weren't they, after their little win at the weekend against Bristol City. I still think uh, it's not going to happen, even if they were to mount a, a miracle comeback against Reading today, which I don't think they're going to do. Out towards the right-hand side, and Caddis tries to play it forward, intercepted, though. It's a poor pass from him, actually, straight to Lewis Buxton. Buxton went long down the line, Frampton intercepted it though, and again, Daniel Jones gets the chance to try and break forward, he's sent up in the air, but no foul forthcoming from the referee, designing it was a fair challenge. And Wednesday now having to do some defending as the ball goes over the top, looking for Benyon. Benyon, well, uh, double teaming there was uh, Rob Jones, and also uh, Lewis Buxton just to snuff out the danger from the ex torquay striker, cleared away, but only as far as uh, Douglas. Douglas works that one forward, out towards the right-hand side. They've got a chance maybe to get a crossover now with Ndai. He goes backwards towards Caddis. Caddis on to halfway, controlled by Frampton. Frampton pumps it long. Up underneath that one, though, was Lewis Buxton. James O'Connor tries to win the second ball. It's turned forward, though, by Prutton. It breaks out towards the right-hand side, knocked inside towards uh, Ndai. Goes back towards Prutton. Prutton with his long hair, you can't fail to miss him. Out towards the right-hand side, and Caddis will try and pull the cross back from the byline. It's headed away by Wednesday, and Johnson out for a throw. Well, a little bit frustrating at the moment. We've not got started, we're not winning uh, any balls in midfield. Swindon have come to attack, obviously. 
we've got some ball players in that midfield area. You look at Broughton, you look at Jonathan Douglas. I don't know whether you saw any of them at Leeds. Did no. you ever venture across to watch them? No. Your connections? No, no, I didn't. You try and stay away from, uh, from that club. <laughs> I'm here every week. I know you are. I know you are. This is where your loyalties lie. You don't need to go back there. It's just a job. <laughs> he can't answer it because he's a former player. I'll just say it for you. But that one goes out of play. But no, Douglas, I think he's a decent player. And I also think that, you know, Prutton, if you give them time and space on the ball, they can uh, work the football. It's a bit surprising what's happened to Swindon because this was the bulk of the same team that got into the playoffs last year. Yeah, well, they've, they've had a, a nightmare season, haven't they? And they look as though, I mean, they're just about down anyway. Well, aren't they, they are. It just shows, doesn't it, in football, though, how things can just change around. One minute you're up and next minute you're down. And they did lose uh, Charlie Austin in the January window. He's got a lot of goals. I don't think he'd quite done as well this season. Pulled back out towards the edge of the air and it breaks towards the oh! edge of the box and it's fired in from distance. And Sheffield Wednesday have taken the lead and it's Potter who's uh, swung the boot and he's uh, fizz one in past the goalkeeper, Phil Smith. Maybe slightly wrong-footed on that occasion. But a nice build-up from Sheffield Wednesday and they've broken the deadlock here at Hillsborough against uh, what surely is a doomed Swindon Town side. And it's Darren Potter who scored the goal. Sheffield Wednesday won, Swindon Town nil. Well, I suppose that's what happens when you're bottom of the table. You know, Swindon perhaps dominating uh, possession. Not really testing Nicky Weaver. But on the other hand, we haven't tested Phil Smith for, for Swindon either. Jermaine Johnson, lovely run down the left. Cuts inside. Passes to Mella. Mella lays a, a nice little ball just to the side. And Darren Potter still with some work to do. You know, he's sort of taken half a step back and then uh, come onto it. And he's, and he's caught it really well, but it's just got a slight deflection that's helped it to go past Phil Smith. Yeah, he sort of drilled it quite low. It wasn't a, a great height, but the it's goalkeeper... Good, he did deceived. connect well. He connected really well with it. Yeah, he did. He it's got a good his strike. full body, full weight through the ball. And Swindon, well, they're trying to mount a reply immediately. But Wednesday, we get the ball away with uh, Jones. They were looking for a foul just before that as well, but it wasn't uh, given by the ref. But uh, a long-range shot from uh, Darren Potter. He's, I suppose you'd say, another player that could well be uh, considered to be on trial. I think uh, Gary Megson said that to his players. Who was that? Darren Potter, he said that, you know, the whole squad effectively is on trial now. We might be safe and not worrying about relegation, but there's still plenty to play for if they want to convince him that they want to be part of the long term. Well, exactly. That is what it's all about. He has got to find out who wants to be here next year. You know, who wants to be on that promotion journey next year? And so the season's not over. You know, big style, it's not over. And you do see it, don't you, at this uh, time of the year when you haven't got much to play for. Players sometimes do go into that kind of on-the-beach mode. We've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the playoffs have uh, made the season last, last longer. I mean, it lasts longer at the top and it lasts longer at the bottom. And the, that's why the playoffs are such a good thing. Good thing. But involved in the one with Charlton? In the very first one, yeah. Yeah, was that when uh, Sheridan hit the bar, didn't he, from halfway, I think, for Leeds, if I remember rightly? Long-range shot. I think he took it from a centre and he crashed it against the top of the uh, I can't remember. No, uh, I, I played for Leeds against Charlton. I just right. left Charlton in the January. That's when uh, the sort of premiership side... That's right, yeah, because the, the team... The were Charlton the team in the Premier or the yeah, top flight well, at the time? It wasn't yeah, Premier yeah, League. It was League One, but yeah. Division One. And uh, we got into the playoffs at Leeds. That, that was the first one, but the, the finals then were home and away. They weren't at Wembley. That's right, yeah, I remember that. And we went to a, a replay at Birmingham. Balls worked out towards the right-hand side and Callis, a bit of space to work in. Well, that's Swindon, what are they made of? The answer this season has been not very much, unfortunately. Danny Wilson lost his job, former out, and now another former out. Paul Hart's trying to rescue him, but it's probably uh, too late in the day. He keeps getting these little gigs, though, doesn't he, Paul Hart? Yeah. It's like, can you rescue us from relegation? That's Red your assignment. Yeah, exactly. He's had Portsmouth, he's had Crystal Palace. He's also got uh, Swindon Town now on his CV. He's a good player, Paul Hart. Yeah, no-nonsense uh, defender. He was in charge of Barnsley as well for a time. I saw an interview uh, with one of his players, uh, Bobby Hassel, who he brought to the club at Vars. Let's just break away a minute because there's a chance of Swindon to reply. And this could be the equaliser. Weaver goes down and makes a really good save because I thought Ritchie was going to round the goalkeeper. But he managed to get something on the ball and uh, Wednesday surviving that breakthrough. Fantastic save. Should have scored. One-on-one -on -one and uh, Nicky Weaver has pulled off a, a fantastic save at his feet. He really made himself big and got down and I thought he was going to get rounded but he did just enough to uh, claw it away from the uh, man on loan or he was on loan I think they signed him in the end from uh, Portsmouth initially he came on loan but uh, a really good save from Matt Ritchie 
And at Wednesday, certainly happy with the outcome. 19 minutes gone, it's still Sheffield Wednesday 1, Swindon Town nil. I was just saying that Bobby Hassler, who he signed when he was at Barnsley, was saying that perhaps Paul Hart went to Barnsley too soon after Nottingham Forest, which uh, was very close to his heart. He was quite bitter about kind of losing his job there. I remember he was uh, really highly regarded, particularly as an academy coach. Everyone always talks about his coaching, uh, maybe more than his, his management. He had a number of good players through at Leeds. You look back to the Harry Kuehl, Jonathan Woodgate era. They all came through the system when uh, he was involved in it. And Forrest also produced some players, including Prutton, who's now playing for Swindon. You will know him well. In the middle of the park here, Sheffield Wednesday have got possession with uh, O'Connor. Goes backwards there towards... Uh, Reda Johnson, Reda Johnson works it out towards the right-hand side. Wednesday coming forward and looking to attack now with uh, John Obsenivor. Going on the overlap is uh, Daniel Jones. He's in the box. Daniel Jones tries to cut inside. He slides on the turf. He's suggesting, or maybe not suggesting, but uh, however you look at it, he's uh, rolling around on the ground. He's in a bit of agony. I thought he was well, trying to get a penalty. Two players are down. The Swindon player who made the tackle can't see from here. So can't see... Uh, Francois. Uh, both uh, writhing around on the floor. Francois looks as though he should be OK to get up. Daniel Jones doesn't look good. No, he looked like he got a bit of a battering in the leg there. It studs to uh, some flesh from uh, Jean-Francois. So a bit of a stoppage here with 21 minutes on the watch. A few of your messages coming in at this uh, opportunity to uh, break away and just have a look at uh, some of your emails. Uh, Russ Batty's not in China, it usually is. Uh, at the moment, he's at home in the Philippines for a few weeks. Must say the weather is better, and uh, a win for Wednesday would be the perfect end to the day. Also one from Luke. Hi, guys. Glad to hear that uh, Jones and Johnson are getting starts on each wing. Hopefully, I'll get to hear a few goals getting knocked in tonight, both for us and for Reading. Big shout-out to all of my fellow Owls talkers, too. That's from Luke, the Aussie Owl. You've heard one goal already, Luke. Also one from uh, Brian in New Jersey. Uh, I can't think of a better way to spend a Monday morning at uh, work listening to my owls. It must be a very productive day there. He won't do any work for the next hour or so, and then he'll suddenly just literally have to play catch-up, and uh, the next hour after that he'll be uh, busting a gut to get everything done. Ball's just uh, sent forward out towards the uh, right-hand side as uh, play recommences. Swindon are coming forward, and Cadiz just tried to knock that one off. Uh, the foul's been given, though, in favour of Sheffield Wednesday. James O'Connor I don't know whether he thought the decision had gone against him to start with because he's just arguing with the referee. But no, he wants to play advantage. Jermaine John, he just uh, knocked Jermaine Johnson in, but the referee had said that he hadn't taken it as a free kick. He'd just held that ball on, but no, it was advantage us, and I think that's what James got a little bit upset about. No, it's just down in the left back position. I don't think we were going anywhere in any great hurry after that challenge by Elliot Banyan. It's sent forward by Weaver, but it's intercepted, and Swindon have got uh, possession back. They work it out towards the left-hand side, and Rose will pump it long. It's a great-looking ball, and Jones gets his head to it. He heads it back towards his goal. He rests the scamper over to the right-hand side to go and get it, Nicky Weaver, but uh, he had to intercept that, because that was a good-looking ball from the left-back. Yeah, a couple of times they've tried to get it over. I sent a half's head. Rob Jones has done really well there. He's found Nicky Weaver with his head back. Pump long, looking for uh, Gary Medine, and well, he's uh, looking for a decision to go his way, but it's not uh, given. Frampton's challenge is fair, according to the referee. We've not seen much of Gary Medine so far, I don't think, in this game. Here's uh, Neil Meller. Meller, well, that's a short pass. It's not going to reach its target, which was Jermaine Johnson, and Swindon have got it back with uh, Dai. Works it towards the right-hand side, and now with Ritchie. Ritchie tries to slot it forward, but he's run out of space. And uh, I think it's come off a Wednesday player. And it will be a throw-in, so they get another chance to Swindon. They've had a fair bit of the ball, though, haven't they, for the first 23 minutes so far? Yeah, yeah. They've, um, I just said, as I've said before, we know we've had that one shot, and uh, unfortunately, there's some there's more bad news from Reading. Not more bad news. <laughs> Two nil down. But they'll turn it around. Those blades, they're confident. I'm sure they are. Survival starts now. Ball out towards the right-hand side. I can't help but uh, enjoying uh, the misfortune. As, uh, I'm sure one of the two of their supporters Ooh. enjoyed ours last season. This ball is just cushioned back by uh, Caddick to uh, Smith. I'm not sure that the goalkeeper was expecting him to get the ball back, but he dealt with it in the end. So no on goal at the back post. Out towards the uh, right-hand side. And Rose will ping it long down the line. He's looking to uh, try and get the, uh, the chasing Benyon in the clear, but uh, Johnson's uh, crossed to it and he's just uh, trying to usher it out of play and let it go for a goal kick, and uh, I think he's got what he wanted. 
Well done, Johnson. God. Referee was right on hand, though, to be fair to him. He did, he went right across God. towards the corner flag, check everything was done uh, fair and square. Good fitness, ref. Well done. And he's a bit porky as well, the referee. It's, it's all muscle, that, Rob. It is muscle, obviously. It is muscle. He's Look, an athlete. Call, you can't call the referee poor. <laughs> Maybe it's just the top, he's got this fluorescent uh, yellow greeny thing on. It perhaps isn't flattering to his figure. Out towards the left Come hand on, side, Jermaine. Jermaine Johnson looks to uh, burst forward, galloping forward now, attacking the done. fullback, and he just gets past him like he's not there and tries to stroke it across. But the defender was in there tracking, and Frampton slides in to make the tackle. He had to uh, block that off as well because uh, I'm sure that Jermaine Johnson would have found a colleague, but it's a corner kick. Well, it makes it look easy, doesn't when he, when he does that kind of run? Carried that ball 30, 40 yards. He's gone past, almost gone, has gone past one and left him for dead. Nearly gone past the second. He's got the corner. Well, he was just about the byline. And as it was a chance, I thought he might have gone down and got a penalty. He takes this corner as well in towards the goalkeeper. It just claws it away. It's the most confident to punch or claw. I don't know what you'd call it, really. It sort of flapped at it. That's probably the better description. It's crossed back in by Rita Johnson, but it's uh, only as far as uh, one of the uh, Swindon players, which is Douglas, who will carry it away. And the Republic of Ireland International just runs out of space and gives the ball up to uh, John Obsenabor, who goes long and he finds Mella. Mella with the oh! header! And Neil Mella with the first time header. The goalkeeper was a few yards off his line. And from John Obsenabor's cross to the right hand side, Neil Mella does it again with goal number 19 for the season. Sheffield Wednesday now comfortably in front against Swindon Town. They lead against the Robins by two goals. To nil. That was a great header, that from uh, Neil Mellor, and that was a superb header. I mean, that, it's a long diagonal ball, he's got him behind uh, the centre half, and the goalkeeper's caught in no man's land. But he's looked, before he's headed it, he's looked to see where the goalkeeper is, and he's just headed it over him. Great header. Yeah, I think as, as well, you're right about the, the quality of the header because whilst the ball's coming in, you still feel he needs to get the power again from within, you know, yeah. his own neck muscles there, just to. Plant it over the top of the keeper. Terrific, Edda. Terrific. So well done to Neil Mellows. Really enjoying a, a rich vein of uh, form, and the goals are certainly coming for him. And you know, you were talking about points to prove. He's certainly come up with the goals at the right time if he wants to stay at Sheffield Wednesday. I, I mean, I, I spoke to him on the training ground uh, when he'd not played for a while, and I think it was the day before. I'm sure he got the, the couple of goals. Uh, you know, he was so excited about playing. Well, just you know, crossed it. Sorry about that. It's just a break for Swindon, and there's a shot that was just uh, fizzed in from the left hand side. I think it was Rose, but it's blocked off by Wednesday, and it's Swindon still a possession inside Wednesday's half. Well, they're trying to uh, mount a response. They knock it into well and I, but his touch was poor. Sorry, just to uh, make your point. No, I just I was just walking past him, and I uh, Neil, all right, blah blah blah, and uh, he said, oh yeah, I'm playing someone I can't wait. He was so up for it, you know. And, and I have to say, you know, that's not always the case, is it? Some players aren't always up for it like that. But he was so, like, pleased and happy that he was playing and he got his opportunity. Uh, and since then, you know, I think, I think he's, got, he's, put, he's tried to put a case together. 19 goals this season, OK, not all of them have come in the league. But, you know, I think he's showing that <laughs> he wants something anyway, doesn't he? He's got something about him. He wants, he wants to be somewhere. He's trying to, trying to prove to everybody that... He wants to come here. I mean, he'll still be, still be a Preston player, I believe. Mm, yeah, he's got contract? another year. He's got another year. But I think they've got issues in terms of the wages, and I don't think they're really that keen to, to play him again for that reason. Perhaps I don't know whether it triggers any clauses or anything like that, like obviously Wednesday they've had with Miller. But I mean, whether they survive, which doesn't look too uh, likely at the moment as well, would also have a bearing on it. Well, exactly. I mean, if that's what I'm saying, they might want him if, uh, if they come down. I think he was on a, a decent whack, though, because uh, he's had a, a fairly uh, good career as Neil Mellor. You don't start at Liverpool if you've not got something about you. It's a free kick here, right-hand side. He does seem to score as well in bunches. You know, he, he's had phases in this season. I remember he got injured at Carlisle, I think it was December time, when there was that frozen uh, pitch. It was a really cold night as well, and you know, that was a real blow to have him out for a few weeks because he was really starting to hit his straps and get the goals, a few hat-tricks, sort of back-to-back. -back. Remember he got a hat-trick against uh, Hartlepool, I think it was, in the Johnson's Paint Trophy, and he also got one in the league shortly afterwards. Ball sent long by uh, John Obsenabor. That's right down the middle, and it's just uh, tucked back to his goalkeeper there by the uh, defender Frampton as uh, Gary Medin gave chase. Smith taking hold of the ball, and they try and build out of defence. Here is it, Kelly. So you look at Mellon there working his socks off. 
You know, we've got in this league, you've got to have 11 players like that who are prepared to run, and uh, and it's painful. You've got to put yourself through that pain barrier. And and what did it do? It, you know, he, he couldn't win the ball back. He couldn't, you know. But if you don't put that running in as a team, then you, you end up getting beat. Paul breaks to the edge of the area, still Swindon trying to come forward with Prutton. He has to go to the right hand, uh, the left hand side rather, and Rose gets it back in the middle of the park, just tries to uh, slam it through the centre. Wednesday deflecting up in the air, and then uh, Rudy Johnson gets his head to it. It's cleared away now, and that's a proper clearance by uh, Rob Jones. Just hammers it forward, and Medine just uh, brushes off the top of his forehead, but it runs through towards Smith, who's outside his area. He's going to carry it in now and uh, just slow things down. And they'll try and build from the back. And in fairness to Meller as well, he does tend to take the chances that come his way because there was a phase certainly this season, as we all know, where Wednesday weren't creating anything for the strikers. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a case of you know him getting into positions when he wasn't scoring and, and not scoring the, the goals that were required. He just wasn't getting the service. And you could make a case for the other Wednesday forwards as well. The service hasn't always been of the highest quality from Wednesday this season. See, James O'Connor, another one. Yeah, he's... Uh, you know, who puts that shift in. You know, he's always snapping, he's always at some of his heels, he's always trying to tackle. He's always putting somebody under pressure. So, but when you've only got two doing it, if, you, if that's all you've got doing it, that's when it all fails, because, like, in the end, those two will stop doing it, because you can't do it on your own. I think one of the biggest uh, reasons for Wednesday's turnaround as well, we can talk about the impact of Jones and Bart, who've done very well as centre-half since they've uh, joined on loan, but I also think having Buxton fit again, playing regularly, and also I think John Obsenibor as the ball pops out towards the back post, and it's turned across there by Endai. Nobody's able to uh, make contact, and that was just begging to be converted. Yeah, it was uh, another long diagonal ball that's gone over the head. I think it's gone over Reader Johnson's head. Swindon player at the back just plays it across. It's gone right across, not even the six-yard line. It's about two yards out, and uh, there was nobody there to finish it off for them. Ran across the uh, the goal line almost, but nobody able to steer it into the back of the net. It comes out towards uh, Rose, deflects, and Weaver saves it with his legs. Another great save on the follow-up. How did Nicky Weaver keep not the first one, but also the second one out? A superb reaction save because uh, he was going the wrong way. Well, we, we score from a similar sort of shot. I mean, Nicky Weaver's gone, he's dived. The, the shot is deflected. That's like two goals. <laughs> he's just, well... He saved the first one, this deflected, he saved it with his feet, and God knows how he's done it. And then, the follow-up, the lad's gone in, he's got an empty net, and Weaver pulls off another save. That was an incredible uh, That's why stop. Weaver's played today. It is, Richard definitely. O'Donnell hasn't done anything wrong. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is absolutely superb. It all happened so quickly, I couldn't even tell you who the guy who got the second chance was. He's lying on the floor at the moment having some treatment. I don't know whether he got a bit of a kick on the floor, but uh, brilliant goalkeeping. That is uh, why he's played at the top level for so long, Nicky Weaver. And, uh, well, I think the man who's just limping away, he'll be all right. But he's uh, felt some pain. Well, they got caught by Nicky Weaver in the process. His body's flying in. To react to that second ball, but I thought that was that was destined for the goal, didn't you? As as the shot came in from distance, oh, you see that Weaver's going towards the the other side, and the ball's the going to the net. right. Was, I was I was looking at the halfway line. It was it was two one. I don't know. He's, well, you're looking twice as well, weren't you? Yeah. The first one, you think, yeah, that's it. You think, oh, he's he a great that. save, and he's just going to tap that in now. He's done another great save. Superb stuff, Nicky Weaver. Out towards the left hand side, Jermaine Johnson just uh, skips past the fullback like he's not there, but he can't keep it in. And it's uh, gone out. It's going to be a throw in. That's uh, Nicky Weaver. I, I wanted as well recently, you know, before he actually was ruled out through injury, whether he'd been carrying a knock and was just trying to battle on for the cause. But he looks as sharp as ever today. Yeah. But, but what's the good that's come out of it is that you know that you've got an understudy. Which needed to happen because Richard O'Donnell's been sat on the bench for, I think, about 70 odd games and he's never had a taste of first team football for Wednesday. It pops to the edge of the area and again a shot's drilled in there by uh, Richie. It's uh, charged away. They're looking for a penalty there, suggesting handball, but they won't get it. And Wednesday come forward and they uh, ping it into the uh, right hand side, the space that was occupied by Medine, but he won't get there and it runs out for a throw. Well, Jones has done well there, done well to chase that ball and keep it in the first place. And Medine, I like that little run, he's bent his run, stayed on side, trying to turn uh, Swindon around. You know, we're not only just coming to feet all the time now, we have got players who will try to run in behind. They go short to Swindon, 
coming out towards the right hand side. The point I was going to make defensively though was, you know, you've got Buxton regularly playing and I think he's he's been arguably our, our man of the season. I think he's really defended well this season. And John Obsenibor is also playing really well at the moment and giving us another edge yep. right back. Lewis Buxton, uh, yeah, he's, he's had a really good season and uh, looks to have come on, his confidence has grown. Someone was asked the question, actually. It might have been Giles Coke. Someone was telling me about this sort of privately that they were asked who was the best defender to face in training, and, and they said Lewis Buxton every time. It just stops everything. You know, that's all he's about, just stopping people. He's just brilliant at that kind of job. Yeah, yeah. So throw in when and uh, he's filled in at left back. And what happens usually when right footer goes across to left back is that they go across there and. Uh, whether or not what it, what it's the adrenaline or, or whatever that gets you for, through the first couple of games, but then the, the sort of the form dips because you're playing you are playing out of position and yep. you know. But uh, Lewis Buxton has been quite consistent really. He's done really well. Do you think he's tried to limit his game to some extent when he's playing in a foreign position? He's he's tended to stay at home and not get forward that much, which he does more on the right hand side. I think we saw that the other week in the last home game that there was a t the time when he did get into a position that, and needed to use his had to use his left foot. You know, so obviously he's a right foot player. He's right foot. He's naturally better than his left, and that sort of ability to put the ball where he wanted, he's got with his right. He didn't have with his left, and, and no, and the, the cross. So he's probably thinking, yeah, I'm not going to be as effective going forward with my left foot, but I can be more effective as a defender. He heads that one as well from the clearance from uh, Phil Smith. Goes back in towards uh, Wednesday territory, though. Dealt with, though, by uh, Rita Johnson. He just hoofs this one up towards Gary Medine. He doesn't control that. Gary Medine hasn't really had much luck today. I don't think he's uh, really been involved in the play. No, he's uh, won a couple of headers and all that, but... Uh... Bit of a passenger so far. He's still a young lad as well, I think we forget that. Still learning the game. Maybe they want to get him uh, bolted out a bit as well. But he's uh, certainly a real talent. We've seen that already. He too has got 18 goals for both teams this season. Carlisle obviously to start with. That's a good Jack return, though, isn't it? For a season, if he just uh, looks it over the season, he's got 18 goals, 18 and 19. You'd be happy if they were both playing for us next year, if they've got 18 and 19 league goals. Yeah, if you can do that again, you'd expect to be there or thereabouts. Played out towards the left-hand side, and Lewis Buxton. Buxton is going forward now, and he's trying to attack uh, the right back, and he's uh, done enough just to uh, get the throw his way. I think it must have come back off Buxton from uh, Cadiz. So a throw in to be taken. Of course, Lewis Buxton did have a hand in the goal for Neil Meller at the weekend. It was his shot that uh, popped back out for uh, Meller to head in or hook in. I remember the goal, I've only seen it once on the replay, I wasn't there. I think he sort of hooked it, he sort of looped over the goal line from Neil Meller for uh, number 18. Out towards the right-hand side, and it's with uh, Callis. Plays it inside, controlled by uh, Jonathan Douglas. Goes back towards the uh, right-hand side, and Frampton will just uh, fire this one long. Tries to find uh, Benyon, doesn't come off for them. Wednesday have got possession with uh, Daniel Jones, just nodding that one into the path of Gary Medine. But again, it was just uh, to the side of him. He's not able to get involved in the action. And it's gone back for Smith. And we're approaching half-time. We've had 38 minutes. Sheffield Wednesday are leading against Swindon Town by two goals today, if you're just joining us. Now's uh, attacking the uh, Leffings lane in the first half. Swindon going towards the cop. Rob Jones has to do some defending, and he just uh, manages to Rob do Jones. enough just to cushion that one back under pressure to his goalkeeper, Nicky Weaver. Been challenged by uh, Benyon, but he didn't let him put him off at all. And Nicky Weaver just places this one down on the floor outside his area, and he's going to boot it long. And it's flicked on by Gary Medine. Tries to find Mella, but I think he's adjusted to have uh, used his arms just to uh, pull the defender out of the way. Yeah, he's just pushed him there in the back. Just a slight push, but just enough to put him off. David's got in touch. Good afternoon, all you fellow Wednesdayites. Sun shining, Owls winning, United not doing so uh, good. Basically, that's a, an equation that equals a good afternoon. <laughs> the mathematicians out there. Ball's played back there towards uh, Johnson. Oops, Rita Johnson lays it off for uh, John Obsenabor, and he batters this one long into the channel, and it's uh, brought down by Gary Medine, but it just uh, Got to runs get out of that. space. And uh, his control not as good as it should be. It's a throw in for Swindon. 
That looked like a foul throw, by the way, from Rose. He's taken it, and he'll get away with it. But uh, I think he got it uh, wrong, to be honest with you. And Dye breaks forward through the middle for uh, Swindon Town, but Wednesday doubling up for a combination of uh, Darren Potter and also uh, Rita Johnson. Out towards uh, Caddis on the right-hand side, tries to work it inside for uh, Ritchie. Goes backwards towards Douglas. Douglas to Ferry. Ferry goes short towards Caddis. The two former Celtic players combining there, and they've... Well, they've got in each other's way, they've messed it up because Wednesday have got possession back and it's now with uh, Medine. Worked out towards the right-hand side by Potter. He manages to find John Obsenabor. He's carrying it forward now. He's going down the right-hand side and slots it forward to Daniel Jones. Jones will play it into the middle. Well, he was trying to pick out Gary Medine. Was that um, an example of a, you know, a lefty on the right? No, no, no. Gary Medine... Gary Medine's made the run to the near post and uh, Daniel Jones has just looked up and, put, and seen that, that run. As when he's put his head down again, then Gary Medine's checked his run and gone to the back. But Daniel Jones couldn't have been expected to, to see that. He's looked up, seen his made his run, and he's, and he's played it to the near post. So Gary Medine, what he should have done was come to the far and dipped in, gone to the, gone to the front. Just while you were talking, Swindon have come down the other end and popped the ball in from the left hand side, and it's taken a touch off a Wednesday player. I think Lewis Buxton possibly making the final contact, and it's going to be a corner kick. So some defending to be done from uh, Ferry's delivery. Great he pace short. Jones. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he just plays that one short and Ferry will get it back and he attempts to cross again. Wednesday uh, defending through Jermaine Johnson back there, so another corner. We know he's got pace though, Daniel Jones. Yeah, he just he asked for that ball, put him behind and he got there. I'm glad to see him playing in midfield actually. It's a role I've wanted to see really from the start of the season because certainly going forward is his main strength. Ball sent into the box and it goes into the mixer and it'll pop out towards the edge of the area. Almost drilled in once, but the second time, it's a fantastic strike. What a wonderful goal that is from Douglas. He whizzes that one into the top corner. Well, he almost scored against Notts County at the weekend. I saw an interview with Martin Allen where he said he crashed a volley that had that gone in. It would be the best goal he'd ever seen. It didn't go in on that occasion, but that one did. That's some strike from about 25 30 yards out, it's fizzed into the top corner and Swindon get a goal back in 42 minutes. It's now Sheffield Wednesday 2, Swindon 1. No, what's Nicky Weaver playing out there? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I think that's your tongue firmly planted into your cheek. Hey, it's a great know. strike. No, well, even Nicky Weaver couldn't save that. That was a superb strike. Volley from outside the edge of the box. And even though I'm thinking that's going in the top corner, I'm thinking, no, Nicky, Nicky will save this. But no, he was, he, it was impossible, even Nicky Weaver. It just sat up brilliantly for him and uh, he didn't hold back there. To be fair, Swindon are going to count themselves a little bit unlucky because Nick, if it weren't for Nicky Weaver, you know, they'd be on level terms. And I was just about to say that coming up to half time that, yeah, we, uh, we, we've, we've scored a couple of goals, but Swindon would have counted themselves unlucky, you know, to have not got at least one. Uh, you know, if it hadn't been for Nicky's, well, he's, he's had three world class saves. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what the uh, pose uh, possession stats were like because I would say that Swindon probably had more of the ball in this first half. But, um, as it is, the uh, the main stat that matters is the scoreline, which shows that Sheffield Wednesday are leading by two goals to one, but conceding just before half-time is never a good idea, so that will give them a little bit of hope, certainly to uh, come out and mount some sort of challenge in the second half after well, Paul Hart has a word with them. Well, he'll be pleased that they've not, not given in. You know, uh, they've shown a bit of character. And as I said before, they, they probably consider themselves a little bit unlucky. You know, that they haven't got more than one. Wednesday coming forward down the right-hand side now. And they'll try and play the crossing. It's a low ball, which wasn't the best ball either from Neil Mellor. But he doesn't give up. And he just looks to uh, put pressure on there. And uh, well, he didn't allow uh, the clearance to be made without a challenge. And Rose has got it forward. And that's uh, winning our breaking now with uh, Benyon. It's been challenged here by Lewis Buxton on the edge of the area, but there was a bit of pulling there from the striker on Wednesday to get a free kick. Yeah, good defensive work again, Lewis Buxton. He's, co he's come across, covered his uh, centre-backs uh, from left-back, got the pace to get there. He was foul. Nicky Weaver will take it, just five yards outside his box, pumped it forward. Blasted it long, looking for the flick on from Gary Medine, but the defenders across as Mella tried to get there first. And Frampton has touched that one off towards uh, Canis. Canis carries it forward and uh, tries to play it down the line, but it wasn't a good pass, but it comes off Lewis Buxton. And uh, Swindon win a throw-in, which they take quickly through Endai. They've got it now with Ferry, and that is uh, well, fairly hopeless. They uh, punt forward into space. 
by uh, Matt Ritchie, in fact. Sheffield Wednesday get a throw in. Lewis Buxton is in no great hurry to uh, get on with things. Throws it up towards halfway now. Looking for the touch on from Gary Medine, but it's straight to uh, Jonathan Douglas. Four minutes of added time. We play it forward towards uh, Elliot Benyon, and uh, well, he's been challenged by uh, Rudy Johnson. It goes back for Nicky Weaver, which has prevented him from having a free run in on goal. We throw it out through Weaver towards uh, Lewis Buxton. Jermaine Johnson's foul, surely by Caddis. Well, he's not given that. Unbelievable because. Uh, Gary Medine just knocks it into the uh, space that he thought that Jermaine Johnson was going to run into, but he was on the floor. And I don't think he was following uh, what happened exactly there, the referee. That's a strange one, that one. I don't think he saw it. I think he's just looked at the ball and thought, well, why are you lying on the floor? <laughs> but either way, Wednesday will uh, hopefully not pay for it as Swindon will uh, try and carry it forward now, right hand side with Callis. Goes back inside towards the goal scorer, Douglas. Works it back, and they're just uh, keeping possession here at Swindon. Nice and patient. And Jean-Francois goes out towards the left-hand side. Wednesday have got possession back, though. Potter cushions that one off towards uh, Johnson, and Ruda Johnson goes long for Gary Medine. It comes off his uh, right leg, but he's given possession away again. Wednesday again get it back, though, through Jermaine Johnson. Johnson, great Go close on. control. He's looking to try and get into his stride and slips it oh. through. Here's a chance for Meller, who goes Offside. down in the area, but he's offside. He went down again. He's, he's good at winning penalties, as we know, lately. And he, I think he was looking for one then, actually. I'll tell you what, that was fractions. I thought he'd... Uh, well, be interesting to see a, a replay of that. I didn't think he was offside. <coughs> Voice yeah. is gone. It was quite close, the decision. Certainly a marginal call. It's on halfway. Sheffield Weds to get possession with uh, Darren Potter. Goes short towards Gary Medine, who does well to hang on to it. Now I'm losing my throat. Goes out towards the right-hand side, and here is uh, John Obsenabor, who's uh, galloping into space. He's got a fair bit of space to work in. Let me go down the side, right-hand side of the field. Goes back for Daniel Jones, one step over, then another. Still Daniel Jones, tries to play it into the middle, but that's a, a fairly tame-looking ball. Doesn't find anyone in a blue and white jersey. Miller was the closest, but Swindon have got possession. And they look to uh, ping it long through Matt Ritchie. A long raking pass, trying to find Benyon. But Benyon's beaten to it by Lewis Buxton, very assured defending. And Lewis Buxton, the former Stoke City man, comes down the uh, left-hand side, tries to slot it inside for Gary Medine. But again, the interception's made by the uh, number two, which is Cuthbert. Just looking at Cuthbert, he's, he's come on, obviously. I didn't spot that one. I don't know when he came on, but he's, uh, he's in the defence right now. No, it's Frampton that's not gone off because he was uh, missing at the weekend. They brought him back into the team today. It looks like they made a change that I uh, failed to spot at some stage during this game. It was Frampton that uh, departed. So uh, Cuthbert now playing at centre back, wearing two. And here he is again, getting a touch of the ball and feeding it back to his goalkeeper, Phil Smith. And Phil Smith will uh, try and. Uh, Hoof this one long, right-footed he goes. Rob Jones will be favourite to win that one, but he gets flicked on by Ndai. Wednesday covering up with uh, Rudy Johnson, though, only as far as uh, David Prutton. He strokes it out towards the right-hand side and found uh, Ritchie. They've gone backwards now for Caddis. Here's Ndai. He's just been bundled off the ball by Jermaine Johnson. It's a throw in for Sheffield Wednesday. And Paul Hart's not happy at all with the uh, ease at which the uh, possession was given up by Swindon. He's having a word with Endai there about it. We've seen that Palace are beating Leeds as well. And Leeds are struggling a bit at the back end of the season. It is half-time, by the way, folks. Sheffield Wednesday 2-1 up. A few seconds, there is the whistle, and we're back underway. And uh, Swindon is working back towards Caddis in the right full-back position. He goes across there towards uh, the left-hand side, switching it towards Rose. Rose just uh, hangs on to the ball and goes back for Jean-Francois. In turn, gives it to uh, the defensive change that they made in the first half, which is uh, Cuthbert, Scott Cuthbert, who replaced Frampton, pings it long into the channel, across comes uh, Rob Jones, who just hooks the ball into the crowd out for a throw-in. I think some centre-halves over the years do that. Yeah. <laughs> Launch it into the cantilever. If in doubt, kick it out. 
very much back to basics but we've said that's been maybe one of the reasons why Wednesday have looked a bit more assured defensively in recent weeks they have gone back to basics and not tried to do the fancy and I think again we've seen a, a better performance from Reda Johnson defensively in the first half but Swindon are coming forward now and they're trying to work it in towards uh, Prutton and another long range shot is uh, drilled in this time it's from Ferry Simon Ferry not a million miles away from hitting the target there yeah, just hit that nicely, volley just from outside the box. A well, bit, little bit of a half volley. Nicky Weaver was covering it though. I think if it had been on target, he would have saved it. By the way, uh, Russ has uh, just to clarify the situation on the Sheffield United scenario in terms of relegation. He says that it doesn't matter what they're doing at the moment because uh, Palace are winning and Doncaster are not losing, so therefore the outcome is the same relegation. As things stand, they need a win against Reading to keep things uh, bubbling along. Ball comes up towards uh, John Obsenabo, who takes it down on his chest in the right full-back position. Knocks it inside there for Reda Johnson. Goes in towards uh, Darren Potter, pings it out towards the right-hand side. And well, uh, Sheffield Wednesday taking the time with John Obsenabo to go back to his goalkeeper, Nicky Weaver, who uh, just smashes this one long, looking for uh, Gary Medin. Medin again battling away, but not having too much joy. Goes back towards John Obsenabor, though, from Daniel Jones. He's there in support, is Jones. Jones gets the ball now and goes inside there for uh, Darren Potter. Here's uh, Neil Mellor, a bit too close, though, towards the uh, defender, who's able to uh, just reach it in the nick of time. And uh, he'll take it away for Swindon. Giving the ball there towards uh, Jonathan Douglas. And they go out towards the right-hand side now with uh, Kanitz. Again, nice and patient. Jean-Francois gets the ball. Works it out towards the left-hand side with Michael Rose. Goes down the line. It's a long ball. It's a great ball, actually, into the channel. Looking for the run to be made here by Matt Ritchie. But across and to deal with the danger was uh, Johnson. He's they did so really well. well there. Did really well there, Reddy Johnson. He's done so well that we got the, throw, uh, the decision our way, rather, the goal kick. 47 minutes gone. Still 2-1 Sheffield Wednesday. What the crowd is today, John? But it doesn't look a bad crowd. I, I mean, I, I didn't think we'd get that many today. I was thinking about 18,000. One of the uh, the lads from Swindon was asking me, and I just thought probably a bit more than we've had recently, but obviously not in the 20s. But I just thought a lot of people might be away. Yeah. Well, this is the second to uh, last chance you'll get to see the Owls this season at home with the extra match to finish it all off. It soon comes and goes, doesn't it, the season? And then no sooner do we have the summer and we're back again in August. Well, I can't wait for August. I'll be so glad to see the back of this season, though. Yeah, you're just kind of ticking it off now, aren't you? Game by game, it's just running down the clock. Nothing to play for. A season that promised much has delivered nothing, really. But we've got an exciting summer to look forward to. We'll all be waiting uh, to see who uh, we're going to sign and how we're going to improve. And you know, So I think it's really exciting uh, summer in front of us. Coming forward now is uh, Perutton with his long hair, his long straggly hair out towards this left-hand side and the cross is played in by uh, Ritchie and it's deflected. Well, John Obsenable, it's going to be a corner. So some defending required here to keep this one out from Rose's delivery. He's put in some useful-looking balls from uh, previous attempts with corners. Looks like uh, lots of late runners coming in from a Swindon perspective. Most of them just bunching together. Still waiting for him to take the uh, flag kick in. It goes, it's a low one, and it might just pop out for a shot to come in, and it did eventually come in from Ritchie. He's still on the floor, and the shot is fizz wide, but I think there may well be a decision that's uh, gone Wednesday's way in any case. Yeah, I think the referee had blown and given a free kick. I think uh, Endai was the player that uh, popped it wide at the target. Well, Neil Mello just having a few words, not sure what it's about. Didn't see anything, but a free kick has been uh, given because Nicky Weaver's taken this uh, free kick from just inside the 18-yard box. But certainly, I think the first chance when uh, Richie got the opportunity, that would have counted had he yet uh, converted. So another warning shot for Sheffield Wednesday. And back towards uh, Canitz in the uh, right full-back position. Canitz goes long. Wednesday intercept, though, through uh, Reda Johnson. 
up in the air Jermaine Johnson now just trying to glance it forward into the path of Neil Mellor but he's going to have to uh, beat Scott uh, Cuthbert to the ball which he doesn't do but the clearance is poor from the goalkeeper Smith and Wednesday have won it back they're trying to put pressure on to uh, try and build something uh, constructive it's gone out of play though it's going to be a throw in for Swindon bit of a flat start to the second half yeah it's not the best Goes backwards towards Smith. I think the fans probably have a, a similar attitude, John, when you were talking about this season and now sort of almost wishing for the end. And I think fans are also thinking this could have been so much better and here we are winning 2-1, but it doesn't mean anything. Could have been party time. It should have been party time. That was the plan right now. Out towards the right-hand side and again an opportunity for Swindon who uh, started probably the second half the better of the two sides. And Dai it into the channel looking for the cross to come over and the attempt the cross with Simon Ferry but uh, I think that one went straight out of play I thought it might have deflected behind for a corner not so it's going to be a goal kick for Nicky Weaver to take here Tommy Miller just getting warmed up in front of us and also I think that looks like Chris Sedgwick is going to be the first substitution yeah well I wonder whether Daniel Jones will be the player to depart we've said he's not really got involved in the game on the right hand side, I would have liked to have seen him play on the left to be honest with you, but hasn't had that opportunity really. Primarily stuck to the right. Ball goes out of play there for a throw and taken quickly by Jones, but the whistle's no, gone. There was another ball that just was just about to come onto the pitch. So have to try again. And it's thrown short by uh, John Obsenaboy into uh, Gary Medin, gets it back. And the former Southampton and Norwich City fullback will. Uh, Ping it into the path of uh, Ruda Johnson, who goes long towards Jermaine Johnson on the chest. He gets the shot away. It's saved by Smith. Goes back to Johnson in the box. They're passing it amongst themselves. He's yes! Miller! Neil Miller, a little one-two with Gary Medin. Well, who wanted to score then? Eventually, the answer was Neil Miller. And Sheffield Wednesday have got a two-goal cushion restored again. 52 minutes on the watch. Credit to uh, Smith, who made a great save to start with. But Jermaine Johnson was the player who made the burst into the box. But Neil Muller is the man who's finished it all off. He's second in the game. Sheffield Wednesday, three, Swindon one. Well, similar sort of ball into the box, and it landed on Jermaine Johnson's chest. And he, this time, unlike Neil Muller, who headed it over the goalkeeper, Jermaine tried to take it past him. The keeper did well, as you said. The ball's come back, and it's gone between Muller and Medine. And... Medine got his, his court under his, under his foot, he couldn't get a shot in, so he's passed it to Mella. Mella slightly under his foot, but did really well, got the ball out of his out a little bit and then just stabbed it into the side netting. But a good finish from uh, Neil Mella, and I'm really pleased again for him. I'll tell you one thing you can say about Sheffield Wednesday this afternoon, they're definitely taking their chances because I think three chances, three goals pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can't say that we've been peppering their goal, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Take your chances. That's certainly what we've done so far. Here's John Obsenabort going backwards. Will Swindon keep on fighting or will they be too demoralised? Be interesting to see what they're made of. Well, we needed that goal, didn't we? Because, as you said, it was a little bit flat. We've got the opportunity now to bring three substitutes on uh, over, the ne over the next half an hour. You know, and just uh, looks like there's going to be, a, in fact, I'm just wondering if there's going to be three. Well, all, all together at the same time. And they've sat back down again now. So Sedgwick was going to come on because he's getting back up again. Miller's just been had a word with. He's gone Rob behind Jones. the corner. You know, Rob Jones with a good tackle there. But no, Sedgwick has gone and sat back down. So maybe they've changed the plan now. You can understand Sedgwick maybe coming on just to keep things tight if, if you know, Swindon were starting to cause us a few problems. Perhaps he might be thinking, we don't need to do that now. And the game plan's changed. A question for you from uh, Sawyer Lost in a minute, but first let's watch the corner. It comes to the edge of the area, and again it's a strike for the man who scored the uh, goal for Swindon, Douglas. He tried to side-foot it, and he definitely seems to be the target from these uh, corner routines. They work it to the edge of the area, and he arrives in late, and he almost... Uh, Tested Nicky Weaver once again, but it was blocked off still. Swindon coming forward, they curl the cross in through Ritchie towards the back post. Too strong, though, for a day to do anything with it, and it goes behind for a goal kick. It's not a mass question, is it? No, it's not a mass question. It says, when you're a mass. player, John, um, how did you spend the close season, and how do most footballers spend the summer break? 
Well, I think the first thing that you want to do is get away on holiday. And I used to go away with teammates and have a week away somewhere with either teammates from where from where I was playing. Someone was at Charlton. There was a I went away with Mickey Lyons, who was manager at Grimsby then. Uh, we had a week away. There was about six of us. Or if, the, if the team we were playing for didn't go away, and then I'd come back and then go away with family or whatever. So I'd get my holiday in straight away, and then what I would do then was, I, I'll, I mean, I love training on my own. So in the summer, I mean, I used to live next door to a, a marathon runner, and uh, I just said to him, look, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm every night come and get me and take me out. I said, I'll be hiding, I'll, you know, I'll be <laughs> out behind the settee and I won't want to come, but make sure you come and get me and just take me for a run every night. There's a shot here from Swindon from distance. It's deflected off Jermaine Johnson, I think, and uh, he's in a bad way off the back of that. Yeah. Well, he's winded himself a what from the effort from Ferry. But well, I used to go to the Pine Grove and do two hours up there in the morning, uh, do the weights, and then go for a couple of hours run at night. But I loved it. So it's not just these modern footballers who were looking after themselves, even back in the dark days. Yeah, no, but the, that, I mean... I think that when I when I first started, pre-season was like, like people had been away and put a stone on when they came back, and and that that's what pre-season was for. But I think you soon learn that, that you're actually making more work for yourself. No, you you, you can't you can't waste your summer. Yeah. And, and most players will, will have uh, programs now that they've given by the manager. Yeah, it's all changed now. The sports science of it all. There's a free kick here. That's, I think they were looking to take it quickly at uh, Swindon. We'll just hold off. We've got the crowd figure, by the way, for you, and it's 17,380, uh, sorry, 348, so I wasn't a million miles off my 18,000 estimate earlier on. Free kick to be taken here by Rose, and he pings it in, left-footed, good delivery, it's punched away by Nicky Weaver towards the edge of the area. Will it come down for Richie? No, it won't. Wednesday will come away with John Obsenabort. And he uh, tries to get things moving quickly. Down the line he goes for uh, Neil Meller. Meller tries to turn past Ferry, still going forward. Neil Meller... Needs some support. He's got inside them really well. Well done, Neil Meller. Great strength from Meller. He wants a hat trick, doesn't he? I hope he gets it. Well, slotted out towards the left hand side. It's a crossfield ball by uh, Rita Johnson. Doesn't manage to find his target, which was Buxton, but it, it comes back for Gary Medine. He doesn't get much power on the shot, but it is on target, but it's saved easily by Smith. Yeah, it's a tame effort. What was interesting, though, you, you talk about, you know, the players kind of went away on holiday with each other. I think maybe now, or certainly you get the impression that the players aren't as pally away from perhaps, you know, training and, you know, they've got their iPods and they seem to be in their own zone, whereas then it seemed like you had, you know, groups of mates as well as being teammates. Well, I think like, we, we didn't have iPods in that, so when we were on the coach, we've got on music uh, that, you know, we, we, used, we, we used to play the same uh, sort of... I was going to say CD, but it wouldn't even be a CD. It was tape, wouldn't it? We put the same tape on, but, you know, on especially the, the year we got promotion here. We'd got a great team spirit. So when we arrived at an away game, we got the you know with the music, and but we shared it. We weren't in our own world with iPods. Uh, and when you went into the dressing room, you know, you, you, people started to bring in the ghetto blasters and that, as they were then. And uh, you know, so we, it wasn't you weren't in your own private world with, with an iPod, listening to your own music. We were all sharing. We, we went out a lot together and, and we, we were good mates. We, we, ate, we ate at dinner time together, which I think they do now probably at the club. But we used to go up to the four lanes up the road from here. I definitely think there's a lot to be said for that, interacting well, with each other. Exactly. I mean, going away at the end of the season, OK, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's an end of season uh, trip away. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it caused a lot of lads problems, but... You got to know more about your mates when you were away, and, and I think it helps if you become pals off the pitch as well as on it. I think that's why a lot of the modern managers quite like to take the team away for a week as part of the pre-season preparation, just to live almost in each other's pockets and you know to get to know each other, particularly when there's new signings arriving at the football club and that side of things. Well, there is that. I mean, I think pre-season is diff definitely different to end of season. End of season is... <laughs> You, your week that you have away isn't the same as a pre-season. No, I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting it was. <laughs> make that straight. Headed away by Nicky Weaver, has to improvise and comes out in his box and nods that one away like a centre-half out for a throw-in. By the way, bad news, Sheffield United are 3-2 up now against Reading, so they're giving it a good old fight at the Blades. Ball goes down the line and uh, this is... Uh, 
Decent stuff from Swindon. They've got uh, Prutton on the ball. Goes backwards towards uh, Rose. Rose combines with Ritchie. Back towards Rose, who just tries to uh, get beyond his uh, marker, which is Daniel Jones. Goes back inside in a sliding, crunching tackle by Ritchie, and he's hurt himself after that challenge by Daniel Jones. He's still on the floor, but Swindon are continuing. They're not bothered about their mate. They're coming away now because Prutton's lost the ball. And it's Jermaine three. Johnson. He's bursting away. He's got great pace. He was being held back, surely, then. Well... Ferry was, uh, got the ball, but he was definitely got a hold of his shirt there and just pulled him and tugged him back. It was the only way that Simon Ferry was going to stop him. He couldn't do it by fair means. Well, Jermaine Johnson's down on the floor now. I just wonder, what, what's he, is he stretching or...? Well, I can tell you a little story about Jermaine Johnson after the last home game. I went down to the press conference and Gary Megson says, I think me and Jermaine must talk a different language because he says to him just down on the sidelines, uh, you know, uh, I think he said a calf or something was tight or something like that. And he says he goes into the medical people and says, I was just tired. So he says, I think, you know, we're just on a different uh, different wavelength, I think. But uh, he was saying we've got, he's got his own theories regarding his fitness and whether he can do 90 minutes. Uh, I think he was basically uh, suggesting he can do 90 minutes. It's in his head. It's Too many people have said that he can't do 90 minutes, and if you say it enough, he'll, he'll believe that. Played short here towards uh, James O'Connor, who dinks the cross into the middle. It's headed away by Prutton. Not foul. that far. There is a foul in Buxton, Buxton there, contesting the ball, and uh, he was guilty of just uh, getting over the uh, top of the, uh, the right-sided player, Kadic. And uh, also in the town. They get on with things. They go short to Endai in towards the uh, feet of Jonathan Douglas. Wednesday have got a problem here because uh, Gary Medine's on the floor. He's looking at Richie, by the way, who uh, less than a minute ago at the other end was uh, struggling. He's trying to stretch and so uh, work Miller, his leg. I was going to say, Miller and Sedgwick look as though they're about to come up. But Miller's gone and sat back down now. You keep so, changing the mind. Well, well, it might be because Medine's gone down. I think we're definitely going to get to see uh, Chris Sedgwick shortly. So, um, uh, I think Morrison has probably come on. Can't see uh, Morrison at the moment. He's out of shot. He's not even limbering up at the moment. He must be sat down. But uh, definitely going to see Chris Sedgwick, who's uh, ready to come on. We can see the back of his shirt. Some final instructions going to him. And uh, Daniel Jones is just coming towards uh, Gary Megson for a discussion about something or other. And we're going to see Tommy uh, Miller as well because Miller's just uh, come forward. It well, looks to me like Medine will come off. Yeah, he is. He's uh, coming off very slowly. So, uh, I wonder if he's just pulled something. Yeah. I'd suggest he's maybe done his hamstring there. He's certainly uh, coming off very slowly, whatever the problem is. So, he might go 4 3 3. Put Jermaine up front, possibly. Straight down the middle. Yeah. That's 4 4 2, though. Well, we'll see what will happen because the subs are happening now. We'll get uh, clarification on who's going off and who's uh, staying on. But definitely Sedgwick and Tommy Miller to uh, join the party. 23 for 24, which is Jermaine Johnson. Why is that then? I don't know. Are you tired again? <laughs> he's either tired or he's got that thigh problem again. But uh, a bit surprised that Jermaine Johnson coming off because, again, he's, he's looked uh, the most exciting player from a Sheffield Wednesday point of view. He's definitely hit a, a purple patch, hasn't he, at the moment? Last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, you know, we, we keep saying that... Uh, we keep saying that Jermaine... <laughs> he tried to throw that out the corner. Has he touched that? He's given a goal kick. <laughs> I thought he tried to keep in and touched it. Yeah, they almost messed that up amongst themselves, Swindon. So we've got a goal kick. Just to explain, we threw we threw the ball back because we got an injury, and uh, Neil Miller tried to throw it over the uh, head of the opposing defender, the Swindon defender. I thought he'd actually tried to keep in and touched it, but he must have missed it. He was just booted forward there by uh, Miller. So we have gone into a 4-3-3, I think, with Sedgwick, Miller, and Jones as the front as the front three. Then Miller, Potter, and O'Connor. As the midfield three. So uh, I was just—I didn't actually see who Miller replaced. Actually, I was looking away at the time. Medine. Medine came off. Medine, of course, yeah, because he was struggling, limping away. So uh, 
an enforced change from a Sheffield Wednesday point of view. So I hope it's not a 4-5-1. It will be when we haven't got the ball. I'm sure we'll see Clinton at some stage. We've got 65 minutes in. Maybe even Paul Heffernan. There are other attacking options. One from Mark Jackson to tell you about on the email. He's working today, but listening to the Mighty Owls 3-1 up. Come on, Wednesday. Can you put the uh, Hovis commercial music on when the legend JP is talking about He's talking about when I was a lad. <laughs> Cheers, Mark. <laughs> well, I was calling it the dark days. <laughs> Coles black today. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We weren't even allowed to drink water back then. It was contaminated. <laughs> Balls played forward towards Chris Sedgwick. But uh, the play's just been pulled up here. And it's going to be a Sheffield Wednesday uh, free kick. What's that on the pitch that uh, Tommy Miller's got in his hand? It's got a sandwich. <laughs> it does look like a sandwich or a, a burger, burger box. Yeah. <laughs> He's not eating. He's just going to have a quick burger. Let's top up the energy before I get going. So a free kick for Sheffield Wednesday just inside the uh, Swindon Town half. It's going to be taken here short by uh, oh! Reader Johnson. He nearly knocked it out of play. He was trying to see if he could outdo that uh, that little manoeuvre by Swindon a minute ago. It's played long by uh, Johnson this time and, uh, well... He got a glance oh. across there from Gary Megson and it wasn't uh, a particularly uh, pleasing glance. He was like, what are you doing there? Not once, but twice you've uh, covered yourself in, uh, well, less than glory, shall we say. Good job, it doesn't matter. The ball uh, fired forward by Smith. Out towards the left-hand side there is uh, Lewis Buxton, though, attacking the ball. Nodding that one forward. It's run back through towards Smith, though. Smith in the Swindon goal. Just uh, belts this one long. Coming down and controlling it now is uh, Sedgwick. Chris Sedgwick trying to get involved in the action, having come on for uh, Jermaine Johnson. Keith uh, has got in touch with us on the email as well, which I'll tell you all about in just a second, because Tommy Miller is trying to drive forward for Wednesday, works it out towards the left-hand side, and that's uh, Daniel Jones just touching that one off into the wards, the uh, corner flag with Lewis Buxton, but he's not managed to do anything constructive with it because uh, Swindon have got the ball back and they'll try and move forward now in towards Endai. He's got a lot of space to which to uh, eat up the ground and play it forward, and he's worked it out towards this left-hand side. Brutton's giving chase controls this one, just about keeps it in play and then plays a right-footed cross into the middle Rob Jones is standing underneath it and heads it towards Tommy Miller and Wednesday will come away now out towards the left-hand side with Lewis Buxton who will return it to his goalkeeper well, he's been pressurised by uh, Bennion who was uh, coming in late but cleared away by Weaver, there's a free kick because uh, Neil Muller's gone down the challenge by uh, the centre-half Jean-Francois there's an illegal one pushing him over inside the uh, Swindon Town half. Yeah, Keith's message says, uh, well done to the boy from uh, Preston North End. Will he be staying next year? Doesn't the price go up with every goal he scores? I think it all depends on uh, whether Preston needs to get him off their wage bill or not, really. I think that might have been the problem more than the transfer fee. It was almost uh, played into him then from uh, Chris Sedgwick as well as he looks for a hat-trick. Centre-half again across Jean-Francois to intercept in the nick of time cleared away here by Phil Smith who just uh, smacks this one long right footed and there's a foul I think uh, Rita Johnson in fact offside. there was an offside yeah. despite the fact he was competing with uh, Elliot Bennion I thought he might have been backing into uh, the striker there but uh, he gets the decision oh, Wednesday's way and they work it, it through towards uh, Chris Sedgwick Sedgwick gets it off uh, James O'Connor and tries to get the cross over and it's blocked by Rose. What were you complaining about then? No, I just thought that ball could have been just stuck another five, ten yards in front. He got loads of space and uh, we had to wait for that ball a little bit there, Chris Sedgwick. Where really, if it had been stuck another ten yards, there was uh, there was grass in front. Well, the ball is uh, just worked inside uh, by Swindon, but they've, well, they've not managed to find their passes at... Well, key times really this afternoon and they've uh, messed that up and ended up conceding a corner out of it it was Rose who got in the pickle to start with and it required an intervention by uh, Andai back there defensively to put it behind for a corner kick Wednesday coming across with uh, Daniel Jones placing it in the quadrant waiting to uh, hook this one in he's got uh, the option of going short with Chris Sedgwick should he require that mechanism, that manoeuvre. In it goes, though, from Jones, looking for uh, Rita Johnson, who heads it goalwards and attacking the ball there, trying to twist and turn and get a goal-bound header was Neil Mellor. Yeah, yeah Johnson's at the far post. It was longer corner kick, did well, but Neil Mellor, not, not really a chance. He's got his back to goal. He's 
on the sort of uh, really difficult angle trying to help it on and uh, not really a chance for him. Just to complete Keith's message, thanks to the player team for saving me the 80-mile drive back to Sheffield today. I'm soaking up the sun in South Links today, but I'm off to Bristol on Saturday. Not quite sure what to do in the closed season. Wednesday are likely to be one of the promotion favourites next season, so let's hope whoever's in the team will be able to take the pressure and wear the shirt with pride and fight every step of the way to get us back to the Championship and onto the promised land where we belong. I won't be listening again on player this season, but it's great value. Enjoy your summer, lads, and thanks for putting a brave face even on some dire performances. Thanks, Keith, for your message. We appreciate that. I know you've contributed a few times throughout the course of the season. Ball's just uh, played long there by John Obsenabor, but uh, it was intercepted. Wednesday have got it back, though, with Chris Sedgwick, and Sedgwick's not that one out of play. It's going to be a throw in for Swindon. Well, they just made a substitution. I think Elliot Benyon came off for Billy Bowden. Yeah, wearing 31. I think they made two changes, haven't they? Obviously, the defensive change first off. But I'm amazed that John Paul McGovern hasn't uh, been involved in this game. He must have an injury. There's no way he'd want to miss out on an occasion like this. I know he still keeps in touch with people connected with Sheffield Wednesday from his time here. He was a victim of all well, circumstances, shall we say. That was the reason why he departed the club. It wasn't because Paul Sturrock wanted rid of him. He had a back problem that kept him out of... Uh, a large chunk of the, uh, it was the second season in the Championship after promotion. And, uh, and he was on his bike and they, they got rid of him. But uh, it was a bit of a behind-the-scenes battle, shall we say. And we ended up getting Wade Small, whose fitness was even worse than John Paul McGovern, who's hardly been injured for Swindon and MK Don since. So make of that what you will. Out for a throw. It's taken by Rose. Goes short there towards uh, Douglas gone back into uh, defensive positions and Cuthbert gets the ball carrying it out towards the right hand side as Swindon look to uh, try and maybe give their fans something to celebrate even a goal bit of an offside over there yeah, just See it offside. it's a free kick for Sheffield Wednesday the goalkeeper Nicky Weaver is coming out of his area to take this one so we've got 20 minutes left now it's placed down by uh, Nicky Weaver Robert Fisher has got an email entitled Attendance. Yeah, read that out. Thanks, uh, Rob. 17,348 is the uh, crowd. We missed that. I already told you that about 10 minutes ago. Cleared away by uh, Douglas. It goes long. Wednesday underneath it, though, with uh, Jones. Again, standing his ground. He's very assured, isn't he, Jones? I mean, you'd have to say he's got to be the first signing on your list in the summer if you can make that happen. He's done really well since he's, since he's come to the club. If Rio Ferdinand's not available. And I didn't realise he's actually a Sheffield Wednesday fan. I don't know whether he knew that. Uh, I didn't know. He was doing uh, some quotes the other week. He was saying that it's kind of his dream move. He, he was a Wednesday fan. He wasn't aware of that at the time when he first signed, but uh, obviously wearing the shirt with pride. So we've got Weaver, Sedgwick, Sedgwick and Jones, all supporters. It just helps having a couple of them in there. And, and obviously, Neil Muller's got Yeah, I was going to say, history. he'll have ties. I think um, he was more of a Man City supporter. He was, yeah, you're right. And I'm sure he would have seen games when he was growing up. Brought along to Hillsborough to see his dad no, involved. I, I think, I'm sure he was born when his dad was here. but So he will, he'll have been... Oh, I, I'm not sure how old he is now, but... I think he was born around the time his dad was here, so he probably won't have seen the right. games when, he, when his dad played here. Ball goes backwards there towards uh, Tommy Miller. Miller controls that one, works it forward. A chance of Wednesday to come uh, with uh, Daniel Jones, who works it outside for Lewis Buxton. Lewis Buxton, he's got uh, the chance to cross over here. Well, he's uh, trying to uh, nip in through a tiny gap just on the byline. He's still hanging on to it. It's real determination from Lewis Buxton, but he didn't quite do enough then. I think that was another example of requiring a left foot that didn't have one. Things are always a bit more complicated when you're wanting to use your right foot. Ball goes short from Swindon in towards Prutton. And it's just booted long by uh, Canis in towards the opposing half. And underneath that one is uh, Rita Johnson. Does very well just to uh, get up and launch the header. Wednesday have got possession by Daniel Jones. He tried just to knock it inside. I think Miller, Miller rather was the target, but it didn't quite uh, reach him. But they've kept possession for a combination, a combination of Oak and Sedgwick. 
pinged out towards the left-hand side by Potter. And Potter manages to find Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones with the cross. It's headed up in the air by uh, Cuthbert towards the edge of the box with Miller challenging. But uh, it comes off uh, a combination of Miller and also Prutton. And Swindon have uh, come away with it left-hand side. They're going to make a final change on Swindon in just a few moments. Here's Obsenibor. Works it inside for uh, Darren Potter. It's with uh, Rada Johnson. We've talked about, uh, obviously, uh, Jones today. What about Johnson, though? Do you think he's been uh, better again? Rita Johnson? Yeah. Well, I, th I think he's had a steady game. He's yeah. not, you know, he's not put a foot wrong. He's looked comfortable. Uh, he just just then just got in front and uh, nicked, nicked the ball away. But, uh, you know, we've seen him too often try and get in front. And, uh, you know, his positional sense not always been there. But today, I think he's looked fairly solid, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely listening to whatever's been uh, asked of him. And I'm sure he's been asked questions in the sense they probably said, look, just keep it as simple as possible and then you'll be a good defender. It's not about uh, showboating and trying to dribble away from your marker. You're supposed to just uh, kick it out. That's your job. Ball goes back for Kadic to uh, cross in for Swindon. It's a good-looking ball as well in towards Endai. It's cleared away by Wednesday. And uh, Sedgwick was waiting for the ball to come down, but he will get it away, but not that far. And here is uh, Jean-Francois, who just uh, rolls it into the feet there of uh, Pratt and gets it back. Inside it goes for Douglas, who tries to uh, increase a bit of urgency into the pace of the move, and then uh, well, a shot is dragged well wide of the goal by Ritchie, and that will be a goal kick. So Swindon's third and final substitution. On coming Calvin Andrew. Yeah, Calvin Andrew, he was one of the starters against Notts County at the weekend, and then Dye, I think, is the player to depart. So uh, another forward... And Dye was kind of playing in a supporting role just behind the attack. A little bit up and down, and I remember him at Crystal Palace. He could be very good or indifferent. So uh, they've made that change, and Calvin Andrew gets an opportunity. Another player who's come from Crystal Palace. I think if memory serves, he did score against uh, Wednesday last season. Did we play them in the FA Cup as well? I think it was around about January, and I think he scored in that game. And then, of course, we had that fateful day, the two-all draw, which uh, brought us uh, relegation, unfortunately. Throwing to be taken here by uh, Lewis Buxton, who throws it forward. I don't think Swindon have been that bad, to be honest, today. We've seen worse sides at Hillsborough, but for whatever reason, it hasn't clicked this season. I don't think they've scored enough goals. Certainly Austin's been a big well, miss for them. Yeah, it's uh, football's about fractions sometimes and uh, sometimes you get that bit of luck and sometimes you don't. And I think we had a certain amount of luck. <coughs> I was asked a question, actually. I think it was the time that Gary Medine signed for Wednesday. I told the fans um, that there was somebody else we went in for and I never actually followed up who that was. Well, I can tell you exclusively now who the player we did try and sign in January. That was Charlie Austin. Yeah, yeah, we did try and sign him. I think that was a, a choice that was given, but I think it would have blown the budget and we wouldn't have got as many players. But maybe that might have been a better thing <laughs> in hindsight. But, uh, he was somebody that was on the radar. I think the, uh, the price tag was just uh, putting Wednesday off a little bit. There's a free kick taken. It's oh. a low effort and it's uh, easily saved by Nicky Weaver. He watches it all the way as Rose drills it in low. Well, he made it look easy. I don't know whether it was easily saved. He got it round the wall and... It dipped and bounced, or looked to just, it was just to bounce just in front of him, but held on to it really well. I mean, you, you, the last thing you want to say is that the goalkeeper's been the man of the match when, when you've won at home 3-1. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I, I would hope that Neil Mellor will get it, but uh, you can certainly say that Nicky Weaver, whatever he's had to do, he's done it really well. He definitely has played his part. There's uh, Daniel Jones working that one backwards towards uh, Tommy Miller. That one breaks towards uh, James O'Connor. And O'Connor feeds it out towards the right-hand side now with John Obsenabor. He's looking to take on the fullback. He cuts inside and works it off towards uh, Darren Potter. Back towards his midfield partner, James O'Connor. He controls it, has to uh, chase after it, then comes inside for Obsenabor. Goes back towards uh, James O'Connor. They're getting a bit of a muddle and they've lost a bit of the directness that uh, obviously Jermaine Johnson gives you and they've lost out now. And here's Prutton who's going to break forward for Swindon Town. He's still got possession. And he's got uh, plenty of space to work it into. Out towards the right-hand side, a chance now for Ritchie. In fact, it's at Ferry, who goes on the outside towards Kadic. 
It's turned away, sliding across there to meet it was uh, Rob Jones. Comes out towards the left-hand side and Daniel Jones can't control it. Again, it goes back to Swindon, who uh, return it into their own half with uh, Cuthbert. Goes across for Jean-Francois. Out towards this left-hand side now with uh, Rose. Rose steps forward, just works it into the channel. They come out towards uh, Richie, who's on the left now. He was starting up front, but he's playing now as a left-sided midfielder. Controlled by Rose. In for uh, Douglas. Douglas goes backwards for Cuthbert. Cuthbert lays it short for Prutton. And Prutton chips this one long, looking for somebody to get on the end of this, but uh, really Johnson should do enough, will I say that? They've still got the ball back off that uh, Andrew. And they lay this one short. Back it goes towards the goal scorer, but Douglas a bit more wayward this time. And that one's spinning well away, well away rather from the goal. Well, they, they like to line him up on the edge of the box, don't they? They've had a couple of long-range shots. Not so good this time, though, from the uh, Swindon Town midfielder. Free kick, goal kick, rather. Well, Liam Palmer Weaver. looks as about to come on for a final ten minutes. Bit of action then for him. I mean, we were talking about man of the seasons and uh, mentioning that Lewis Buxton was definitely a contender. The fact is, you, you put him down in that category, you'd also say Lewis Buxton and you'd say Nicky Weaver, which possibly tells you the, the sort of story of the tape for the season. Yeah, Neil, Neil Mellon might be there, you know, roundabout. He's, uh, he's ended up the season with, well, he's, he's got 19 goals at the moment. Yeah, and he, he'd expect to get to 20, I would have thought, by the end of the campaign, which, you know, 20 goals in any division is not to be sniffed at. Just looking at who's coming off. It's Daniel Jones. Yeah, Daniel Jones, his afternoon is looks, all over. It looks like he's limping a little bit. He's coming off. 82 minutes. Was he better this half for you? Um, I think he's been fairly quiet in the second half. You know, he's not had... Uh, not seen a lot of the ball. Whether he's been... Uh, he looks like he was limping when he came off. Yeah, he did. Rob oh. Fisher's got back in touch. Uh, he's just apologising for giving me the attendance. Don't worry about it, Rob. I don't think I could read it right the first time I said it anyway, so uh, you probably couldn't make head to tell about what I was saying. Ian Townsend's also got in touch, which we'll tell you about shortly, as the ball is just uh, popped forward by uh, Swindon. They're trying to build. They're working out towards the left-hand side now, just inside their own half still. It's with uh, Prutton. He switches the play out towards the right-hand side. A great cross-field ball. I have to say, I think Prutton's played really well in the middle of the park. He's uh, definitely the sort of player that Wednesday could do with someone just to dictate the play and set the tempo. He was Leeds' playmaker. He was at Swindon. Uh, not Swindon. At, uh, he is at Swindon now. He's at Southampton. Started at Nottingham Forest. I think he lost his way a bit because people were talking about England potential at one time when he was in the under-21s. Here he is again, Pratton, working out towards the right-hand side with Cuthbert. He'll give it back towards uh, Pratton once again. Again, he's got the space to work in. He's going to be forced back to uh, Cuthbert, though. He's out on the right-hand side. Again, it's returned for the former Forest man. He just strokes this one short in towards Ritchie. Keeping lots of uh, possession, but not really going anywhere with it at the moment. Swindon Town, Rose... Goes back towards Cuthbert. It's almost like an exercise of possession football, but Wednesday have just got bodies standing in front of it and they're not really uh, hurting them. And there's the, the, the final ball that's long. And it was easily dealt with by Rob Jones, who's managed to pick out Neil Meller. And Wednesday will be more purposeful, hopefully, coming forward now with uh, Chris Sedgwick. He'll lay this one off for Tommy Miller. He might fancy a shot, decides not to. Works it out towards uh, Liam Palmer. Can he make an impact, the substitute? He's looking to get the cross shot into the box. Oh! And the defender almost turned it into his own net. Well done, Smith, because he was able to keep it out. But uh, Carrick's nearly turned it into his own net. Well, Palmer sent a great cross along the uh, six-yard box just inside. And the defender, as you said, he smashed it <laughs> into his goal. And Phil Smith... Probably equaled uh, Nicky Weaver's save in the first half. Reacted really well. Good save from Phil Smith. He was just uh, thrown short. Swindon again trying to uh, advance from the back. Jean-Francois works it in towards Ritchie. Goes back towards the uh, left-hand side and Rose. Into the gap they managed to thread it. And the chance to uh, run for the substitutes. And uh, well, it's a long-range effort. It's well hit actually there from uh, number 31, which is... Uh, Bod in. It wasn't really troubling uh, Nicky Weaver. Bodin hasn't really showed really much uh, since coming on. And uh, Swindon 
Well, I think they're preparing now for the inevitable defeat today and relegation. Paul Hart knew when he came to the county ground it was going to be a tall order to uh, keep this team in the division. That's probably so they haven't proved. really got a lot to thank us for in this window. No, not really. Danny Wilson, Paul Hart, and then we've gone and beat them on them to send them down. Ball goes back for Smith. Smith just clears that one away. Looking for the flick on. I think it was Peter Shirtliff uh, oh, yeah, there Peter was well. there, yeah. yeah, I thought he was with uh, Danny Wilson. Here's uh, Palmer, who's trying to make uh, a bit of a name for himself in this last uh, ten-minute cameo that he's getting. Sheffield Wednesday goal scorers for those who've uh, joined us late, including Ian Townsend, who sent in an email. Had a few problems, I think. I don't know why. He says he's missed most of the match. But uh, Darren Potter opened the scoring for Sheffield Wednesday. Neil Mellor made it 2-0. Then a wonder goal just before half-time gave uh, Swindon some hope. That was uh, Jonathan Douglas. But uh, Neil Mellor got his second goal to uh, settle any nerves. I think that was in the 52nd minute. So uh, Sheffield Wednesday cruising to all three points with four minutes of regulation time remaining and then whatever is added on by the officials after that for stoppages. Balls uh, laid inside there towards Cuthbert. They go out towards the, the right-hand side now with uh, David Prutton again getting a touch. Comes inside here for Douglas. Douglas, the goal scorer, plays that one on for Calvin Andrew. Andrew tries to link up and well, they try and knock it into the channel through uh, Jonathan Douglas, but it's too strong for uh, Andrew to realistically get there. Ian Palmer was back there, though, just making sure he didn't get it. Tracking back, that's nice to see from the youngster. Apparently the uh, goal-scoring details didn't come up on the Ian Townsend screen on his uh, Wednesday player service, so uh, apologies for that, but uh, hopefully we've filled you in now. Message as well from another Ian about uh, Neil Mellor. He hasn't already hit 20 goals for the season. He's questioning whether, hasn't he? His 19th and I think it was his 18th and 19th today, if I'm uh, correct. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure he's got 19 for the season. Whoa, There's a on. slip here, and uh, Neil Mellor will take advantage, and he'll lace this one off for Chris Sedgwick. Pulls this one back. A chance for Liam Palmer just to work oh. it inside there, and uh, Mellor's touch, just a bit disappointing. <laughs> we'll allow him that one. Yeah, he can uh, excuse that fault on that occasion. Played very well up front, Neil Mellor. Looks a little bit tired now. And he's having to uh, do most of this uh, second half on his own after Wednesday took uh, Gary Medine off. They didn't replace him with uh, another forward. They uh, made other adjustments tactically. To look at midfielders with uh, Sedgwick coming on. Obviously, Tommy Miller also coming into the uh, fray. And now, more recently, uh, Liam Palmer goes back towards uh, Rose. Swindon Town with more possession. Can they get another goal? They work it into the channel through Douglas. The cross comes in, but that was uh, easy to read and uh, just booted away out for a corner kick after the cross from Ferry. Well, this game just being seen out now. 88 minutes on the scoreboard, 3-1. Well, the fans are starting to uh, leave Hillsborough. They've seen enough. They know it's job done. From a Sheffield Wednesday point of view, as the corner is whipped in, it's headed away by uh, Mr. Dependable Rob Jones out towards the edge of the area. It's retrieved by Douglas, lifted up in the air by Cuthbert. Still a chance for a shot from Prutton, and he fires it in first time. And uh, Rob Jones must have got something on that, you know, because it's going to be a corner kick. Yeah, that was a great volley from Prutton. Caught it really well. I thought that was heading for the top corner again. And. Uh, I don't know who it was. Who... It was Jones who jumped for it. Well, they must have deflected it somehow. The referee's given a corner. Must have been the faintest Jones of again. touch. He meets the uh, corner kick and uh, gets it away. A chance, though, for another cross to be uh, put in. They work it into the sides, and then the cross is uh, put into the six-yard box. There's a few players attacking, including uh, Andrew. And Wednesday again blocking it away. Out for a corner kick. And Lewis Buxton got the touch on that occasion. And the cross goes Rose to take it. We've... Uh, Almost reached the 90-minute mark. And Swindon ending the game with a little bit of a flourish. Left-footed delivery from Rose. It's a great ball. It misses everyone. I think Cuthbert was the nearest to it at the back post, but it runs out for a throw-in for Sheffield Wednesday. 
They'll be wondering how they didn't touch that one home then. That's just gone, it's evaded everybody. There's a good uh, corner in from Rose, smashed it across the six yard box, and uh, nobody could touch it. So, another four minutes in the second half, additional time. There's been a goal, by the way, in the Barnsley at Doncaster Rovers game. It's now 2 2, and it's Barnsley who've scored an equaliser there. Which I think, in the general scheme of things, let's just double check that. I think that keeps uh, Sheffield United able to uh, survive just by the skin of their teeth uh, with two games left to go. Oh! Linesman's flag just going up for offside against Sedgwick, who'd. Uh, Made a long run to try and get in behind. Mella helping the ball down the line. The flag went up. Yeah, the Blades can get to uh, 47 points. Crystal Palace currently have 47. I can't see what the goal difference is here. Let's have a look. 22. United's worse. They need to do a, a lot of goal scoring in the last two games in order to survive. Minus 22, minus 31 for Sheffield United. Despite the fact they're 3 2 up and heading for victory against Reading today. Ball's just. Uh, Put out towards the uh, left-hand side. We're going to have a few uh, local fixtures, of course, next season with Chesterfield as well. We forget that the Spyrites have been promoted. Looks a good team when they came here early on in the season. Yeah, John Sheridan has got his side uh, really uh, playing the right sort of stuff in his own image, really. I thought it was quite fitting as well that he uh, got Chesterfield promoted in the week that he was kind of uh, marking a special anniversary for Sheffield Wednesday, the, uh, the Rumbelow's Cup final success where Sheza obviously got the winning goal, the only goal. Kick forward by uh, Nicky Weaver looking to try and find Chris Sedgwick, but it comes back in towards the Wednesday half, but they'll turn it back to the goalkeeper through Rob Jones. And Jones gives it to Weaver, and Weaver clears it away left-footed. Again out towards the left-hand side. Intercepted by Prutton, hooked on by uh, Darren Potter, and it's going to go back towards the uh, Swindon goalkeeper who takes charge of this situation. And Smith will just uh, pump this one long right down the middle, but again, it's Rita Johnson who's uh, underneath this one, able to clear it away. Only as far as uh, I think it was Douglas there who just tried to work it into the channel again, looking to uh, get Calvin Andrew in the clear, but Wednesday defending the situation. And then there's a bit of a collision here with uh, Chris Sedgwick going in there with Prutton for the ball but the foul was committed by uh, Prutton and it's a Wednesday free kick let's just have a look at the live league table for you in League One currently uh, Brighton obviously top of the pile then it's Southampton Huddersfield Town are in third level on points with uh, Southampton on 83 each and then you've got Peterborough MK Dodds and Bournemouth in the other playoff places at the wrong end of the table well, Swindon Town are propping up the rest. They've got 38 points. And with two games to play, they can only possibly get to uh, 44, which won't be good enough because Walsall currently have 45 points. So uh, it looks like relegation for the Robins today. It's funny, though, isn't it? And quirky how football works. You know, Paul Hart was here and lapping up celebration of surviving last year. And here he is having the other feeling today. Yeah. Ball goes short, and it's now with Prutton, who will uh, try and slam one in. It goes towards Andrew, and it has to be put behind by Lewis Buxton, and Swindon all of a sudden have had a, a decent little spell right at the end. Yeah, it's amazing how our team's mentality can change. I mean, I, I presume that over the season, Swindon must have been poor, because we've seen uh, our games when we've not exactly covered ourselves in glory. There goes the final whistle, so that's probably one of Swindon's better performances. They haven't played that bad, but it won't be good enough, I'm afraid, that uh, relegation looks as though that is certain.